Welcome to worship this morning. Thank you for being here today. And a special thank you to those of you who are joining via a live stream. We're so glad to have you as part of worship this morning. Uh, something to notice for today, we have been doing a, a sermon series or worship series on Life Together, a book written by Dietrich Bonhoeffer. And today we are taking a bit of a, a break from that although we are still talking about community and all of these uh, emphases from bonhoeffer but as you see on the screen this is our savior's identity statement created for relationship with god all people everywhere and creation itself and today we are going to be digging deeper into this identity statement and what it means for this congregation. Uh, so be prepared for that, especially in our sermon for today. Please rise as you're able for our call to worship. How very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. Let us together worship the Lord. One, two, three, four.
Gracious and loving God, we come to you today knowing we are broken, both as individuals and as a community. Give us the courage to openly confess our sin through the power of your Holy Spirit, so we may love you and others with our whole hearts. Let us take a moment of silence to reflect on our sin. God of all. God of community. God of creation. Friends in Christ, every morning we turn again to God, confident in God's unending mercy and love. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for God who has promised is faithful. Amen. Please be seated.
Grace to you and peace from God Almighty, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Um, and if you've been following along in your bulletin, you think that we're lost right now, but we're not. Um, we're just skipping over a couple things, and we mean to. And we are now um, coming into the, the reading, which is going to be a combination of reading and sermon. And if the kids are here with us, we're not doing a theme, so if you want to go down to Sunday school, um, you can do that now. Um, or you can listen to the reading and hear the sermon. And what we're doing now is reintroducing and dusting off our identity statement that almost exactly seven years ago we adopted as a congregation um, by doing the same thing, by looking at the first chapter of Genesis, the first book in the Bible, and, and doing it as a Bible study to understand where our relationship or where our identity statement comes from. Um, and I'm going to, to start things off, say this statement a couple times, and then you are going to say it with me a couple times. So our identity statement is that we are created for relationship with God, all people everywhere, and creation itself. Created for relationship with God, all people everywhere, and creation itself. And now twice we're going to do it together. We are created for relationship with God, all people everywhere, and creation itself. One more time. We are created for relationship with God, all people everywhere, and creation itself. So on to the story of creation. Um, but before we get there, I, I want to say a little bit about what this story is and what it is not. Um, I'm not a creationist. Um, most of my Pastor colleagues with whom I hang out are not creationists, meaning we don't believe this is a story about um, when and how. Instead of, it, it's a story about who and what, um, and the relationship that pertains because of those things. So, on to Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. Good. And now I'm going to repeat um, to you something that I've said several times, and I'm repeating it again because it bears remembering, and, and I want you to internalize this. When... God says good. Um, it's not a description of creation. It's God's promise to creation. So when God says good, it is God's promise to creation. I create you for goodness. And whatever resists that goodness, I will resist. Whatever stands against that goodness for which I create you, I will resist. And think of it like this. Um, it's, it's an old word, but it's a good word. God deems us good. God deems good all of God's creation, um, each of you, um, all of us, and the creation itself. Jesus Christ redeems us good. So Jesus Christ, as our redeemer, brings back to us that original goodness which pertained in the beginning. Now, um, I want you to remember that. I want you to remember that about yourself. I want you to remember that about all of your neighbors, all people everywhere, and I want you to remember that for creation. So now, as we read this story from Genesis, every time we come to that point, where it says, good, you all are going to say that along with me. Got it? Okay, so we go on. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the night day, and the darkness he called night. Now, for those of you who are looking at the screen, you see that God is capitalized and highlighted. He is capitalized and highlighted. And I'm not going to comment on that now. I will later, but for the English majors among you, like myself, um, you know what order of speech that is. Um, if you were to map that out as grammar, um, you would say something about it, but we'll return to that later. And there was evening and there was morning, 
the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together in one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth. And the waters that were gathered together, he called seas. And God saw that it was not bad for a first time. Okay? Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seeds and fruit trees of every kind on the earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was excellent, very good. And there was evening and there was morning, the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs. And, and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night, and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was and there was evening, and there was morning, the th fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth, across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was, God blessed them, saying, be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind, and it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind, and God saw that it was. It was good. Right? It was good, it was good, it was good. Everything God brought into existence, and we haven't gotten yet to people. We're talking about the earth, the seas, the sky, the heavens, and everything that lives on the earth, that swims through the waters and that flies above the earth, all of it was good. Which means that snail darters and spotted owls are good. And some of you who are my age or older will know what I'm talking about. The snail darter was a little insignificant fish that, that lived in the streams and the rivers of Tennessee. And as that fish was dying out, many people said, so who cares, right? I mean, who cares if a snail daughter dies out? You know who cares? God cares. Because God created the snail daughter and God loves it. And the spotted owl that lives in the trees of the forest in the Northwest, when they were dying out and people said, who cares? The answer is God cares because God brought them into existence, and God loves God's good creation that God made for goodness. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness. And now we're going to return um, to that passage 
um, about which I said we would say something a little, late, a little later. God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. He. First person singular. First person singular. Up to this point, that's what we have is first person singular. But then we had this verse here. And God said, let us, first person plural, make humankind in our image according to our likeness. First person, plural. So what does it mean to be created in the image of God? Well, we don't look like God, so far as I know. Um, we don't speak like God. We certainly don't have God's attributes. What it means is that to be created in the image of God, we are not created to be singular. We are created to be plural. To be created in the image of God means that we are created for relationship. And you might ask, so why now? Why is it at this point in the story that this is made clear? And I'll tell you why, because the rest of the creation is not confused about that. The rest of creation is not confused about the truth that creation was created for relationship. We're the only ones who get confused about that. We're the only ones who want to separate ourselves from our relationship with God. Human beings are the only ones that want to separate from our relationship with our sisters and brothers. Human beings are the only ones that consciously at times wish to separate ourselves from the rest of creation. So we need to be reminded. We need to be told that there is no separation. We are not singular. We are plural. We are created for relationship. Relationship with God, all people everywhere, and creation itself. So, number one, right? We're created for relationship with God. God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So we're also created for relationship with all of creation. And it's a special kind of relationship. Let them have dominion. And, and the root word of, of that word dominion is the word domine, which means lord or master. And that's key because God is our Lord, right? God is our master. And that means something very specific. As our Lord and master, God loves us. As our Lord and master, God looks out for us. God watches over us. God provides for us. So we are to be to creation in the same way that God is to us. Right? God created humankind in his image, in the image of God. He created them male and female. He created them and gave us responsibility to be to creation as God is to us, to love creation as God loves us. And God blessed humanity. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that creeps upon the earth. So, of course, we are also created to be in relationship with all people everywhere. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit, you shall have them for food. And every beast of the field, and every bird of the air, and everything that creeps upon the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was. It was very good, right? Not just good, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, 
the sixth day. So our identity statement tells us who we are and who God calls us to be, um, which is very important. As we went through two years of our COVID separateness, it was a very difficult thing for all of us. And within those, that, that difficulty, each of us individually had difficulties. Um, two of mine. One is that uh, just a few months into COVID, um, in late June, I had a heart attack, and I had three stents put in. And physically, you recover from that very quickly. But spiritually, emotionally, psychologically, not so much. Um, because that's the first time where I had been faced with the reality of my own mortality. Um, it's the first time that my body on which I have really depended for so many things was failing me. Um, so it took me a long time, several months to recover from that. And as I was pretty much recovered from that, I had in January following reconstructive shoulder surgery. Um, all the tendons in my um, rotator cuff were blown, my bicep tender was, was blown, I had it reconstructed, and it was a very long and tedious recovery, and I'm even now rebuilding strength. But the fall after that, um, this past fall, late in the fall as I was training for the Arrowhead race up north, I turned to Jennifer and I said, I'm starting to feel like myself again. Um, I'm starting to feel like myself again. As a congregation, um, coming out of COVID, it's time for us to be ourselves again. Um, it's time for us to recover who we are and who God calls us to be. And who we are, say it along with me. We are created for relationship with God all people everywhere, and creation itself. So number one, right, what we might call ID one, identity one, we're created for relationship with God. Number two, ID two, we are created for relationship with all people everywhere, and ID three, we are created for relationship with creation itself. And in order to be who we are again, to be who God needs for us to be, there are things that we need to do with ID1. Um, as a community where we nurture most our relationship with God is in worship. Um, but things have fallen apart a little bit. Um, for two years, many of us, worship was something that we tuned into on our television or our computer screen, and it's something that other folks did for us. So we, we've gotten into some bad habits. Well, now we're going to start getting out of the habit. Um, I'm going to ask Chuck and, and Vern to pass clipboards around, um, and the clipboards um, indicate how each of you wants to serve whether you want to be a communion assistant, an usher, or want to be on the newly forming worship music and arts team. And for everybody who's not in the choir or not otherwise involved in worship, it's our expectation that you will choose one of those involvements because we need to get back to human beings giving us bread for communion instead of taking wafers from paper souffle cups. And we'll do that only when we have enough communion assistance to make that possible. We need to get back to when people who aren't in this community come into the narthex and they don't know what to do, there is an usher who can smile at them, greet them, give them a bulletin, and tell them where to be seated. Um, these are easy things to do. And each of us needs to take ownership for the worship that we do as a community. So please write down where you would like to serve in any of those three areas. Second, creative for relationship with all people everywhere. There's a lot we need to do. We're gonna start out with very, something very simple. Um, and you'll get an email and such about this. You don't have to remember the date, but I wanna prime your brain. On the 19th of May, um, Thursday night at 7 p.m., 
we're going to meet as a congregation to talk about opportunities in our communities to be the body of Christ, to be present in the way that we used to be when we were who we were being, um, that we lost during COVID and that we need to recover. So Thursday, May 19, 7 p.m., um, come and talk about how we can be the body of Christ in our community. Lastly, our relationship with creation. Um, many of you know that in the Narthex we have a big screen TV that shows an ongoing report on the solar production of, or the energy production of our solar panels. Um, it's not enough just to walk in, look at that, and say, yeah, that's great. Um, or to come in the sanctuary, look up and see, ooh, LED lights, that's good too. Um, there are things individually that we each need to do. Um, so a quick question, how many of you have already mowed your lawn this spring? Good, great, because I'm going to encourage you during May not to. Um, and I say that because you may have heard or read something about no mow May. Um, May is the period of time when pollinators, like bees, are very active, and they are pollinating um, the, the trees and the plants on which we and the rest of God's creation depend. And this is when they get a good start. So when we um, mow our lawns and get rid of many of those plants that they depend on in order to feed themselves and to carry pollen um, hither and yon, um, we are damaging the start that they get. So I'm going to encourage you not to mow during May. That's something that you can do for God's good creation with which we have a relationship. So ID1, relationship with God, worship, we can all do our part. Number two, relationship with all people everywhere. Um, May 19, when we gather together and talk about our activity in this community, relationship number three with creation itself. We'll talk about that more, but one thing we can do is not mow our lawns during this May. It is time for us to be who we are, right? To be who God needs for us to be. And, and who is that? Well, we are created for relationship with God. Say it with me, please. We are created for relationship with God, all people everywhere, and creation itself. That's who we are. And that's who God calls us to be. Thanks be to God.
We continue with Psalm 8. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Out of the mouths of babes and infants, you have founded a bulwark because of your foes. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers. What are human beings so that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. All sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field. O oh Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Let us now gather our hearts and minds and pray for the world, for the church, and all people. Gracious God, we pray in thanks uh, for your promise of goodness. You promise that we are brought into being for goodness and remind us that we are good because you are good and your promises are true. Remind us that we are created to be in relationship with you, with each other, and with creation. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, when death comes and makes its way known, Remind us again that you have created us to be for life and not for death. Be with those who grieve especially now, and I pray especially for the Dahl family as they grieve for Lori's mother. To be with the Bow family as they prepare to say goodbye now to Robert. With Kim and Mark as they uh, suffer the loss of the little one. In the midst of all these things, oh God, remind us again that you are life and you bring life. So give life, hope, and peace to those that grieve. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, today is a day that is bittersweet for many. We pray with deep thankfulness for all of the women in our lives who have mothered us in so many ways. We thank you for the wonderful examples of motherhood that we have known and seen and experienced. And we also hold in our hearts all those for whom today is difficult, those who struggle with relationships with their mothers, who have lost mothers to death, who are longing to be parents. We hold all of these, in our, all of, all of these people in our hearts and we uh, give them to you for your tender care. We pray in thanks for your love for us the love as a mother, as a, hun, as a hen, gathering her chicks under her wings. Lord, in your mercy. We pray especially for those who are going through the hard things of life, the difficult struggles of life, and walking through those deep, dark valleys. Remind them again they don't walk alone. We lift up to you Kennedy and Lisa, Marv, Gladys, Christopher, Ethel, Scott, and those that we now offer to you as well that are close to us and we love. We ask especially that your healing hand and hopeful hand be on upon them and with them to guide them through to a brighter day. Lord, in your mercy. God of peace, we pray for all of those experiencing conflict here and around the world. We especially hold in our hearts today the people of Ukraine and all those who are experiencing uh, difficulties due to violence and war. We especially pray for all of the leaders around the world who are making decisions that affect so many. Guide their hearts and their conversations toward your vision of justice and peace and give us inspiration. Uh, let us know that every act that we make is powerful and important, even if it feels small. We are a part of this recreating of your world into a place of peace. Lord, in your mercy. We're reminded, O oh Lord, by your psalmist in your scriptures 
that we are knit together in our mother's womb and wonderfully and created, made in your image. May we continue to hold on to that dear thought. Lord, in your mercy. All these prayers we lift up to you, knowing that you listen and that you hold all of our prayers in your tender care. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Please share the peace.
Let us pray. All that we have and all that we are comes from you. Bless these gifts that we return to you and give us confidence that together our generosity will powerfully shape your creation, bringing hope and new life. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. This is not my table, but this is the table of Christ, and it is for all of you. This is the place to come and to know that you are created for good, and that God uh, wants goodness and dreams goodness for you. This is the place to receive the strength and mercy and love of Christ. As you come forward, you can uh, may take a wafer from one of the uh, little paper cups and then also take and receive the wine. The grape juice is the clear juice in the cups. The table is prepared. All are welcome. come together walking in the spirit there's much to be done we will come reaching out from our comforts and they will know us by
Please rise as you're able. And now the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you that we, though many, are made one body through your gift of communion. Strengthen us for the days ahead and make us blessings for the world through this gift of grace. Amen. The God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus. Amen. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The God of all grace bless you now and forever. Amen. One is that this Friday we will be having a potluck and movie night here at church for anyone who'd like to come. The meal is at 6 p.m. and the movie we expect will start around 6.45, so we invite all of you to that. And also a quick reminder that May 19th is our evening meeting at 7 p.m. to talk about our connections with the local community and how we would like to bring some of that energy back to our saviors. Now as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God through him. Thanks be to God.